Uh, as much as we wish we could be together in person, it's really exciting for me to have so many of you join us here and to see so many familiar faces for what's now our fourth annual National Girls and Women in Sports Day celebration at Knox. My name is Kim Schrader and I'm the college's Title IX coordinator. So it's part of my job to champion gender equity. It's also deeply personal. Uh, and tonight I'm really proud my role includes honoring the achievements of past, present, uh, and future female athletes, coaches, and leaders, and recognizing the confidence, strength, and character gained through participation in sports. Before we hear from tonight's speaker, I also wanna take a minute and ask all of you to join me in thanking Lexi Vernon, on whose shoulders this event stands. There are many others helping make tonight possible, but from the beginning, it has been Lexi's leadership and commitment to this celebration moving us forward. So thank you, Lexi, for inspiring greatness and modeling what it looks like to be a strong leader in sports and in life. Applause. Now, in this year in which we've embraced remote connections, I am thrilled to welcome our keynote speaker from her home in Japan, where I might add it is already early tomorrow morning. Talk about an example of leading us forward. Originally from Blaine, Minnesota, Jennifer Larson Park graduated from Knox in 2004 with a major in biology and a minor in neuroscience. While at Knox, she was a four-time letter winner in indoor and outdoor track and field, setting four school records, including in the outdoor 400 meter dash and 400 meter hurdles with times that remain at the top of the all-time chart today. Jenny also led the team as captain in 03 and 04 and off the track, she served as chair of the honor board and was elected president of the class of 2004. After Knox, Jenny moved to Berlin, Germany where she obtained an MS in medical neuroscience from the Charité Anniversity Medes. In 2006, she said off Wiedersehen and returned to Chicago to work as a clinical research coordinator at the Chicago Institute for Neurosurgery and Neuro Research. She went on to pursue her medical degree from A.T. Still University of Osteopathic Medicine in Kirksville, Missouri, graduating in 2011. While in medical school, Jenny was commissioned as a Naval officer and after graduating, completed an internship at the Navy Medicine Readiness and Training Center in San Diego. She then trained as a Naval flight surgeon and cared for aviators at both the Naval Air Station Oceana in Virginia Beach and VAW-120, a squadron in Norfolk, Virginia. In 2015, Jenny returned to San Diego and completed her residency in internal medicine. Last September, in the middle of a global pandemic, Jenny and her family moved to Iwakuni, Japan, where she is currently stationed and serving as an internal medicine physician, caring for Marines, sailors, and their families. Jenny is married to Brian, who's joining us tonight. He's also Knox class of 2004. And together they are raising three children, Carter, Avery, and Harper, as well as a Yorkshire Terrier named Jackson. Jenny still loves running and has added traveling and home decorating to her list of hobbies. That's a lot of accomplishments, but Jenny is also a part of Knox athletics history for another lesser known, but equally important reason. Before he retired in 2000, then athletic director Harley Nosher, who is with us tonight on what happens to be his 87th birthday, was the primary recruiting force behind the Prairie Fire teams. For 40 years, Coach Nosher made countless phone calls and built lifelong relationships with young people who came to Knox and donned the purple and gold. Then after a storied history during which women's basketball, softball, tennis, volleyball, cross country, track and field, swimming, soccer, and golf. Nine teams all became intercollegiate sports for women at Knox under his leadership. Harley's official recruiting career ended with Jennifer Larson Park, who is our speaker tonight. Thanks, Harley. You got us a good one. Welcome, Jenny. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Kim. That was a wonderful introduction. Um, you stole my thunder. I was gonna thank Harley and Co Coach Nosher is the reason uh, that I decided to make the trip down to Galesburg, Illinois uh, after talking with him multiple times and it was late in my senior year uh, that I made the trek down there. And I have no one else but Coach Nosher to thank for that because all it took 
was for me to meet Kim on that day, Coach No Shirt, and to step on the indoor track uh, in T Fleming Fieldhouse and to know that that's where I belong. So thank you, Coach. Um, thank you all so much for joining uh, us tonight. Uh, good evening, President Arnott, uh, Daniela, Lexi, Kim, crew. Uh, and all of the organizers for this event. Um, it is an absolute delight to join you, um, to be chatting with so many uh, familiar faces and new ones, uh, and an inspiration to see so many uh, student athletes joining us tonight. I'm gonna attempt to, um, I'm probably one of the only people who has not used Zoom very much, um, just because of uh, being in a position, we tend to do everything in uh, person. So. We'll see if I can make this work to share my screen. Let's see, I think I have to be made a host maybe in order to share my screen. I don't know if Kim or crew, you guys could help me out with that. There we go, okay. All right, so uh, I hopefully in, the, in this talk, I'll be able to take you through my journey as an athlete and hopefully provide you with some tips. Um, when Kim asked me to do this talk a couple of weeks ago, I was absolutely thrilled um, and just uh, touched by all of the memories uh, that came to me as I was preparing for tonight. And as I took a moment to be intentional about what specifically athletics has done for me uh, and how it has impacted where I'm at in my life, I was really overcome at how much of my life has been touched by athletics and being a woman uh, in athletics and the time that I went, you know, through being an athlete and still now I stand on the shoulders of all of the women who came before me. Um, and now seeing where women in athletics, and it's just, it is tremendous. The accomplishments like Daniela was mentioning that we've made and how much more progress I'm excited to see come now in the next 20 to 30 years. So Hopefully uh, my talk will bring back some memories for those of you that are alumni uh, and for the current students, get you excited to get back in there uh, uh, with the coming seasons. So I'm gonna highlight a couple of the, the points. I, I came up with, I don't know how many different um, things that specifically impacted me as an athlete. And I tried to narrow it down. So I came up with seven. And the first one is seeing the big picture. And this takes me back actually to uh, when I was a basketball player. So basketball was my first love as an athlete. Uh, I originally, I was the tallest girl uh, growing up and then I stopped growing uh, when I was about 11 years old. <laughs> so I was, a, I was a center when I first started playing basketball. And then quickly when uh, everyone shot up above me and I became a lot faster, they decided to move me to point guard. So to move from a center position to a point guard uh, created a, a, a certain amount of resilience um, to be able to make that transition. Um, but it was exciting uh, to be a point guard. And I, I love the thrill of being able to um, take the ball uh, from the opponent and be able to dribble down to the other side and shoot a layup on a fast break. And our team was quite good in high school. Uh, I was the captain of the team, but there was another point guard who was much better than me. She was two years younger. And I quickly learned the importance of taking a step back and seeing the big picture and recognizing that even though I was the senior on the team uh, and I had held the point guard position for two years, that it was time to take a step back to let her take that role on. And that even if it meant sitting on the bench more, that that was, that was the important part. That was seeing the big picture for the good of the team. Um, this is our, let me see if I can, this is our, this is my eighth grade basketball team. So I tried to drum up some good pictures and 
found this one. So this is my eighth grade uh, basketball team. And many of the women that you see here were um, also players on our high school team. Uh, and I just wanna impress on um, the young women on the call, um, but then all of us to really be intentional about taking that step back, seeing the big picture. If you're in the thick of, uh, um, of something that you're going through and you're not quite sure what direction to take to always take that step back. And I think I'm, I'm very fortunate that I was able to learn that from a young age. Uh, the next point that I wanted to make is surround yourself with positive and encouraging community. And this is more important now than I think ever. Uh, and just seeing the community on this call and having those talks and um, meeting with people in the breakout room and corresponding via text and different group chats that I'm on, um, I'm touched by how much having a community that just surrounds you and lifts you up um, can carry you forward. This is a picture of um, many of the women, not all of them, but many of the women that um, really impacted my time as a uh, Knox uh, runner. Uh, and Coach Bannon, who um, is on the far left there, uh, she came into coaching us, I want to say it was my junior year, it might have been late sophomore or late um, second year. Um, and she really um, took us women sprinters and just pushed us forward. And I am still good friends with her today. We still connect on a regular basis. She actually helped me to um, shadow a couple of the physicians in Galesburg, Illinois, um, back before I started medical school. So um, that community of just lifting you up by your teammates, by your neighbors, by your friends, um, by your coworkers, it's so important. Uh, coach Pio, who you see there on the right, uh, was my coach. He was brand new when I was brand new as a first year at Knox. And, uh, every, well, I don't know if everyone knows, but all of us that ran under him knew that he was a Scott, like bled red and white. Um, for, so for him to come over, I remember our first year, we kept trying to get him to wear purple. She kept trying to get him to wear purple and gold. And finally, uh, he, I think it was probably either late our first year or early second year that he finally started wearing uh, Knox gear. And so then we knew we had him. Um, but he is truly the reason why I stuck with track and field, why I continued to push myself. Um, I was a sprinter jumper in high school and came into Knox as the 200 was my favorite race. I loved taking that curve. I had only run outdoor. So running indoor was a whole new element. Still really love outdoor track and field, but taking that curve and then running into the straightaway, that was my favorite um, race to run. And he challenged me uh, in my first and second year to really focus on the 400. Uh, he actually saw me, I think, more as a middle distance runner, but I couldn't let go of running that 100, 200. And so his encouragement, his coaching um, really pushed me to do better in those mid distance runs. I had never thought ever of running a hurdle in my life. Um, and he said, hey, after practice one day, hey, why don't you try, try just jumping over this and see, see what you think. And he set up then a series of hurdles and the rest was history. I was sold. My heart from that point on was on those 400 hurdles. And um, that, that community, uh, that encouragement, that positivity that he had really helped shape uh, who I was as a runner at Knox. I'm so grateful for each and every one of these ladies for a lot of different reasons, um, but know that whatever your community is, to just surround yourself by that positivity and look to find ways that you can encourage and be positive with others. The next point is attention to the details. So uh, I am type A through and through. I've accepted it. Um, and <laughs> I think once I've accepted it, uh, it's allowed me to uh, tackle new challenges in different ways. 
Uh, this is more important now, probably as a physician and as a Navy officer, just to have that attention to the details. But I learned it as an athlete. And I learned a lot of it actually from watching others. So this was our uh, four by four relay team. And this was taken, I think, um, I don't know if Ellie or, or Michelle or Irene are on, but they could probably correct me. I'm pretty sure it was taken at Ripping College, our fourth year at the very end of the Midwest Conference uh, Championship. So it was our last relay race that we ran together. And the relays are really where I learned that attention to detail. You know, running in high school, I had run the four by one and the four by two. Um, and we kind of like stuck our hands out to grab the, the baton and go. And Coach Pio was quickly like, um, no, that is not how this works. Um, that four by one is so important for that handoff. And the attention that you have to have to the detail of where your takeoff position is, when you stick out your hand um, and calling out to your teammates and being able to work together, that detail really created uh, a union. And that allowed our four by one and our four by two teams to continue to progress. But it was this four by four and anyone who's ever run the four by four knows this race is grueling. It's at the end of a long day. Uh, and then when it's the conference championships, it's at the end of two long days of competing where you really have to focus and um, be motivated and excited and just be attentive to the details, even when you're tired. And that lesson has allowed me to kind of push through in times that, um, I was uncertain about what the next step was and being able to focus in on those details and remember the importance of the fundamentals uh, is what helped me to, to move on to the next step. All right, so the next one is progress over perfection. Uh, this is a work in progress for me. Uh, and this one is pretty near and dear to my heart because um, I have a tendency to focus on the perfection and the outcome. And I think having kids and um, working with our, our two daughters in particular has helped me to really let this sink in. That the journey, the progress that you make is way more important than any outcome that you can achieve. This picture here is um, at the end of my, uh, my fourth year. And these are, I think most of the seniors, not all of them, but most of the seniors that ran cross country and track and field. I don't think it has all of the cross runners, but definitely most of the track um, seniors. And uh, I, I highlighted this picture because it was the culmination of our time there. And every single one of these individuals was was on the team from day one, indoor track, all the way through outdoor track as a fourth year. And I highlight this picture just because of the progress that every single one of these individuals had. And we all chased each other. Irene, who you see on the far right, on the top sitting right next to me, her and I um, were mid distance 400 runners. Um, I don't think she ran the 100, maybe once because I forced her to, but she was mostly 200, 400, uh, 800 runner. And we would battle every practice. And to see the progress that she made as a result of us um, chasing each other, uh, helping each other, picking out little things that we could do better um, and seeing the outcome of that was more important than any medal or record or anything that we could have achieved. Uh, I was just talking to, to Chris on the, in the breakout room. So you see on the bottom right there, uh, he's now a, a coach of high school students at Rova. And we were just talking about how Knox allowed us men and women to practice together. And I attribute the fact that we were able to race against um, men and be able to push ourselves. And sometimes I would win, sometimes they would win, but it was that progress that we made each step going forward to um, 
reach the next level, to reach the next goal, um, more than any outcome that we could have achieved. All right, the next uh, thing that I wanted to highlight is consistency, showing up daily. Uh, this can be hard. Um, I know in different parts of my life, uh, showing up, getting the work done, trudging through it, it's not easy. And sports are really a fundamental time to work on this life skill. And it will carry you forward in so many different ways if you can just be there, even when the going gets tough. Sometimes you'll be able to put forth 100%, sometimes you only get 20%, but the fact that you're there, the fact that you're doing it and that you're in it, that's so important. This is a picture of uh, Brian and I, and I'm gonna, I'm hopefully not going to tear up, but I might. Um, so this is the end of the Chicago Marathon. And we ran this together in 2006. It was my second marathon. So after Knox, um, I realized that sprinting, uh, being an Olympic spr sprinter was not in my, uh, in my goal set. So uh, I, I moved to Berlin and soon after arriving there, a friend and I went to go check out the Berlin Marathon. And I was just, I don't know, I had never been to an event like that where I was just overcome by all of the runners, all different sizes, shapes, races, ethnicities, and being in Berlin, I think was even more impactful. And I said to her, I go, I'm gonna run a marathon. And I had never run more than probably what, What's a cross country race, a 6K? I had never run more than a 6K in my life. And so um, I started training. And uh, this is a story probably for another day, but if you're interested, let me know. Uh, I made my way to Budapest, Hungary, to run in a marathon. And that was in 2005. I'd originally planned to do uh, Berlin, but that race sold out way faster than I expected because it's a super flat and fast course. And so I wanted to run in a marathon and the only one I could find was in Budapest. So I thought, all right, sure, let's do it. And uh, ran it, stopped a bunch of times, but I finished it. And I came back from Berlin, uh, was living in Chicago. And Brian said to me, hey, let's train and do the Chicago marathon. And I was like, what? <laughs> he uh, was a basketball player, four year uh, letter winner at Knox and definitely a uh, sprinter. So way faster than me. And uh, so the fact that he was going to train for a marathon, I thought, all right, sure, let's do it. And the Chicago Marathon is unlike any other, uh, going through all the different neighborhoods and hearing all the cheers um, is, I've done now seven marathons and I compare every single marathon to the Chicago Marathon. And so we trained independently during the week and then on the weekends together. And we showed up, we showed up every day to cheer each other on, check in on each other, see what um, mileage they were, we were gonna get in for the day. Um, and then that morning showed up and we, it was fun. It was a fun race. And at about, Brian can tell this better than I can, but uh, at about 18 to 20 miles, um, he thought he was about done. He's like, I don't know, like, Maybe I should just stop and let Jenny finish. <laughs> but he kept pressing on uh, and he was relied on the training that he had put in all those days leading up to that. And we crossed the finish line. And again, he can tell the story way better than me, but he proposed and it completely caught me off guard. But he said something beautiful, which I wish he wrote down because I don't really remember because I was in such shock. Uh, and he, he proposed in a way that it showed the, um, the amount of commitment that he had to training for that race and to our relationship and just being there for each other. And, um, that's a day that I definitely won't forget. I wish I remembered what he said to propose, but <laughs> Um, being there, showing up, being consistent, it will take you so many places in life. Oh, this one. So dream. So 
uh, Coach Pio always had a set um, goals at the beginning of the season. And, you know, some were just, you know, goals of like what, what we were shooting for or running in a certain number of races or doing certain events. And um, some dreams were big, some dreams were small. And I think the, the important piece of this is just having something to work towards and setting your dreams for what the possibilities could be. I never dreamed in a million years coming out of Knox that I would be where I'm at today, living in Japan. Um, and knowing that you have those aspirations, that you work towards those things, you may not get there, right? But it's the, it is the journey that you take that is so important. And knowing that you have those dreams will set you up so that maybe somebody coming behind you can walk on your back to get to that point. These are just um, a few pictures and Wilma Rudolph is, I just love her. So if you don't know her story, um, she was born, I think in the 1940s and um, was one of, I think like 20 kids in her family. And she was known around town, small town, known around town for just being a spitfire. She was always everywhere. And when she was, I think, four, four or five years old, she was stricken by polio and it left her um, with an inability to walk. Uh, and for several years, she worked through that working with a physical therapist where her and her mom would have to take the bus um, to get to the nearest doctor that would treat black people. And she wore, she worked with the physical therapist. She wore a brace and eventually three or four years later, despite all odds and the doctors telling her, you're never going to walk again, she walked. And not only did she walk, she ran. Um, and she went on to win gold medals in the 100 and 200 meter dash, just an absolute inspiration. The fact that she dreamed and she had that uh, just ability to push through and reach those goals she didn't even know if she could, but to have that dream and that aspiration got her to where she was. So I love this quote, never underestimate the power of dreams and the influence of the human spirit. We are all the same in this notion. The potential for greatness lives within each of us. Knowing that and believing that with all your heart will take you so many places. Uh, these are a collection of pictures just to kind of take you through my journey. So uh, after Knox, as Kim said, I went on to Berlin, um, studied there for about a year and a half, and then came back to Chicago. And it was there that uh, Brian and I decided to both pursue um, our dream of becoming physicians. And we weren't engaged at the time. And we both decided to independently check out schools and apply and then kind of meet and come back together to decide where we eventually wanted to go. And hopefully we we would find both find schools that were within a close proximity to each other. Well, we ended up finding uh, uh, A.T. Still University in Kirksville, Missouri, also a small town, very similar to Galesburg, probably even a little bit smaller than Galesburg. Um, and I came away from my interview there and I told Brian, I said, I'm gonna join the Navy. <laughs> and I think he was a little taken aback at the time and I said, you know, you, you, you don't have to, um, but just check it out. Think about it. But this is, I'm, this is what I'm going to do. And he checked it out and a couple of days later, he's like, all right, I'm in. So we both uh, were accepted, fortunately, to go to AT Still University in Kirksville. And we both commissioned as Naval officers there and then graduated in, uh, gosh, 2011. Uh, and these are just pictures uh, of us on our graduation day and that dream being fulfilled of becoming physicians. Little did we know that there were there was a lot of trials and a lot of hardships to come, but uh, that pinnacle of receiving our doctorate was achieved. This is a picture of our, uh, I love this picture because it's so vintage, so Navy uh, and just that like oorah uh, spirit to it. So this is our flight surgeon class, um, a collection of folks from all over uh, the place, all, ph all physicians, psychologists, and an aerospace physiologist. 
And we went, Brian and I decided uh, our intern year that we wanted to go on and become flight surgeons. So despite the name, we do not do surgery in flight, but flight physicians. Uh, so we learn all the nuances of aerospace uh, physiology, all of the things that pilots and the flight officers have to go to uh, go through in order to learn to fly so that we can help them, whether it's through um, uh, a cough or a cold or headache, or um, if they're going through something challenging in their life that we can help them through that, but also understand the impact that it may have on their ability to carry out flight operations. And so this picture is of our class. Uh, I love it. I love the fact that um, all of us are wearing uh, different gear um, and that we're just a, a collection of diverse individuals who uh, accomplish something. Um, and it wasn't easy uh, going through flight training, but we were able to push through and achieve that dream. This next picture is with one of the a flight officer that I was with at VAW 120. This is in the back of an E2 Hawkeye. Uh, and uh, you can probably tell in my face that I'm a little bit nervous and probably a little queasy um, because the back of that plane is not easy to, um, to sustain being able to do the operations that they have to carry out. But uh, I love this picture because this is when I was actually a flight surgeon and just achieving that goal, that dream of being able to fly in the back of uh, a naval aircraft. This is uh, a picture on the back of the US uh, Naval Hospital um, ship, the Mercy. I was uh, fortunate to be able to go out on a mission to um, uh, within Vietnam, uh, Philippines, and Malaysia a couple of years ago, where we worked with the um, host nation to deliver some care, but then also build uh, a rapport and share lessons um, on different medical topics. Uh, and I love this picture because it really just embodies the epitome of dreams, right? On the, this is at the end of the ship. So looking out into that horizon and seeing nothing but the ocean, but how many things you can envision, how many dreams you can come up with just looking out into the ocean, into that blue sky. Uh, it's an incredible feeling. These are uh, a couple of the women that I served with on the ship and Two, uh, these two I graduated residency with. Um, there was one other female in our group um, who I was with who wasn't in this picture, but these women helped me through a very difficult time. Residency is not easy. Uh, and they embody the spirit of showing up, being consistent, dreaming, and surrounding yourself with that positive, encouraging community. Uh, and I'm just so grateful for uh, their friendship and camaraderie in that time. Uh, this is a picture of me this past year. Uh, COVID has impacted everyone across the board, but definitely how we carry out operations in the hospital. Uh, and uh, I like this picture because it was a totally random day um, that I was uh, on inpatient medicine doing my rounds and had some very difficult conversations with patients. And I decided to take this picture just to remind myself of where I had come from and where I was going and having that hope and finding that hope inside of me, even under difficult circumstances. Uh, this is a picture of our crew. So um, Brian, uh, my husband, Carter is our oldest. He's eight. Avery, who you see down there with our dog, she's six. And then Harper is our two-year-old and our dog is Jackson. Uh, this unit helps me to continue to dream, to never stop dreaming, to continue to look forward, uh, find things to work towards and be pleased and happy with the progress that we're making forward not about the end result, not about it being perfect, but getting there and showing up every day. The last uh, point that I wanna leave you with is to lead. So uh, as, a, as a physician, as an, a naval officer, as an athlete, um, 
I've had many opportunities to lead in lots of different ways. And I've also been fortunate to be led in, by many influential individuals. Um, she may not know it, and I've never met her, but Lloyd, Lloyd Brodnicki was a runner at Knox, I believe in the early 90s, maybe. Coach Nosher would probably know uh, exactly when she ran. Uh, but she held the records in the 400 and the 400 hurdles when I showed up. And I saw her name up on that leaderboard and I said, I want to get that. Um, and she led me without even knowing it, without anything, uh, any uh, conversation that I had with her. And she challenged me to be able to accomplish that goal. So whether you know it or not, whether you um, are having direct conversations, you have impact and you have the ability to lead. Always remember that. I love this quote um, by Ruth Bader Ginsburg, fight for the things that you care about, but do it in a way that will lead others to join you. So leading doesn't always mean telling people what to do or, or um, pushing them into something, but show it in your heart. Show that you care about something so much that it will challenge others to consider it. And if they consider it, it may sink down in them to then follow you. Uh, and I think this is really important for all of us to remember uh, with all of the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. These are my, my influencers here. So uh, they are in a collection of different activities and it's not all organized because they're young, uh, but Harper there on the surfboard, we're hoping to lead her into surfing uh, someday, <laughs> or dad is hoping that anyways. Uh, Avery uh, was in dance for a period and Carter loves soccer. He loves every sport, anything with a ball he's into. Um, but these are the individuals that I hope to lead. I hope to care about something so deeply that they are impacted by that. And they may not follow in the path that I've taken, but it will help them to consider and find something that they care about passionately and then pursue it on their own. Uh, I love these pictures because uh, it captures Avery and Harper's uh, personality, but even from the backside, you can tell Carter's personality from that picture. He will find a way to get to whatever he wants to get to, no matter uh, the path that it takes. Uh, so whether it's roller derby or softball or free solo uh, climbing, um, chase after those activities, care about them deeply and continue to um, lead others who follow behind you. Uh, Serena Williams says many things that are influential. She is a, just a tremendous leader for women athletes everywhere. And this quote in particular, um, impacts me and I hope that it will also impact you and it'll help you to just uh, think about things in a different way and maybe consider it. So the success of every woman should be the inspiration to another. We should raise each other up, make sure you're very courageous, be strong, be extremely kind, and above all, be humble. Uh, and those words just capture the essence of what I think it means to be a female athlete now more than ever. Uh, hopefully uh, I was able to leave you with some just words of encouragement uh, and also things that have helped me through athletics, but also in life. And I think always stepping back and remembering where you've come from, the progress that you've made, dreaming and looking forward to the future, and then looking for others and ways that you can help build them up and encourage them. Um, I'm just, I'm encouraged by all of you being here right now. So thank you all. I'm, I would love to take any questions if we have time for it, Kim. If not, um, then uh, we can definitely connect in another way. Thank you, Jenny. Let's uh, keep moving. And then if you're willing to stay on at the end and folks have questions, I, I think we don't have a time limit. So anybody who has questions and, and wants to share those with you at the end, we can unmute folks and, and they can talk to you a, a little bit. So um, you not only led us, you encouraged us, 
and you inspired us. And uh, for me, it's very much a trip down memory lane. I love seeing the photos and, and loved hearing the, the stories about how the connections that you made at Knox uh, live on and, and continue to sort of influence you today. So thank you. It's been really great personally to reconnect with you. And I appreciate you sharing uh, your message and your inspiration with, with all the women here. Uh, next, we're going to hear from President Teresa Amat uh, on this National Girls and Women in Sports Day in which we celebrate strong female leaders. I am greatly pleased to introduce a woman who is an avowed non-athlete uh, but that who made good on her promise when she arrived at Knox in 2011. Since then, uh, President Ahmad's role has been a vital force, not only on campus, but also in the Midwest Conference and as a leading voice at the NCAA advocating to protect Title IX and advance gender equity, encouraging athletes to use their platform to inspire greatness and supporting diligently working coaches and players. Often seen wearing her vibrant purple and cheering loudly from the sidelines, uh, with some thanks to James Clark, who is our sports information director, I want to highlight just a few of the things that have been accomplished by Knox Women in Sports during President Ahmad's tenure. In total, women's teams have achieved 275 total wins, with 204 of those coming in just the last five years. In cross country, Rebecca Katz set the 6,000 meter school record in 2015, and she now owns the top seven times in Knox history. Women's basketball set career records in three pointers made, points, block shots, shooting percentage, and single season points. The team also made a return to the Midwest Conference playoffs for the first time in over a decade and had two appearances in three years. Gerilyn McCall became only the third member of the thousand point club at Knox and the all time leading scorer. In addition to tallying three Midwest Conference Defensive Player of the Year awards, two MWC Newcomer of the Year awards, and two Conference Coach of the Year awards, soccer also earned eight all region awards on their way to four Midwest Conference championships and two NCAA tournament appearances and they scored the second most goals in school history. Indoor track and field records were broken in the 60 meter, the 200 meter, the one mile, the 60 meter hurdles, the shot put, the four by 200 relay, and the sprint medley relay, and outdoor records were set in the 100 meter, 200 meter, 3000 meter steeplechase, four by 100 and four by 400 relays. As a member of the tennis team, Bumika Gupta went 26 and 19 in singles for her career and had 14 doubles wins. The 2017 tennis team accrued the most wins since 2002 and the most conference wins since 1998. Women golfers set both a career scoring average and single season scoring average records. Swimming and diving set new records in the 100 and 200 meter backstroke, 50, 100 and 500 meter freestyle, 100 fly, 200 and 800 meter free relay, and in one meter diving. Katie Cosiglia, who joins us tonight, was named a softball all region player in 2019. And the team set single season records in hits, RBIs, doubles, triples, at bats, runs, total bases, hit by a pitch, wins by a pitcher, most appearances by a pitcher, most games started by a pitcher, most complete games by a pitcher, and most innings pitched. And last but not least, as a member of the volleyball team, Maddie Ferris was ranked fourth and then second in the nation in 2018 and 2019, respectively, in digs per set, and fifth in the nation in total digs in 2018. The team also set single season digs and attack percentage records with the 2017 team piling up the most wins since 1995. In 2016, Kia Triplett was also fourth in the nation in digs per set. And perhaps, one of the most notable milestones is that Knox has celebrated over 600 female Midwest Conference Academic All-Conference Scholar Athlete Awards since 2011. So when the history books are compiled later this spring, the leadership of Teresa Amat will hold many notable accomplishments, including a legacy of acknowledging the power of sports to unlock the limitless potential of women. Lead her forward, they said, and with inspiration and support, she did. Please welcome President Teresa Amat. Oh, of course, I'm going to cry. Um, thank you, Kim. Um, I just want to start by noting that we have 
some extraordinary women leaders uh, here at Knox and that Kim is among them, Lexi is among them, Daniela is among them. We have trainers, we have coaches. We have really created, I think, a gender equity model here at Knox. Uh, and we are known in the conference for that, for the way in which women can lead in sport at Knox. Harley, if you're still there, just want to say to you, happy birthday. Um, Harley believed in me. Harley never for one minute imagined that a woman couldn't be a college president. And I remember before every football game, I would run into him in the bowl and he would grab me by the shoulders and say, we're gonna do it this time. You know we are, we're gonna do it. I think we have a really good chance. And he believed in me and he believed in all of you. Uh, he, Jennifer, you know, he believed in you as well. So um, thank you, Harley. And, and I think I see Peg there too. Uh, so good to see you, you, you both. Um, yes, you're right, I'm a non-athlete. So while you were doing, you know, listing the various records, um, my sports career, I have to be clear, was not cut short by discrimination against women. It was cut short by a tragic, tragic absence of talent. Um, a level of uncoordination and clumsiness truly unsurpassed. So my personal best, just wanna mention, in my 10 years at Knox, I've broken six toes, I have bruised two ribs. I have sprained three ankles. I only have two, so you get the point here. Because I am just extraordinarily clumsy. So one of the reasons that I love sport is because I have an unparalleled, just unparalleled admiration for those of you who can do what I cannot do. And I'm so proud of you and so happy about this. Uh, Jenny, thank you. Such great insights that you gave. Uh, and thank you also, you know, we say a lot these days to people who are serving our country, thank you for your service. But I want to say thank you for your sacrifice, because I know it's not just service, it's sacrifice. You're raising your family far from home uh, in circumstances in which uh, it is challenging to be a health professional, to be on a different kind of front line. So I want to thank you uh, for all that sacrifice that you do. You'd be glad to know that my assistant uh, is retired Navy. She was a senior chief. So she takes me, um, she, she's, she tries very hard to order me around, um, but she's a senior chief and my, my husband is retired Army as well. So um, thank you for your sacrifice and thank you for what you've done for our, for our country. Much appreciated. Um, the idea that this is the fourth National Girls and Women's Sports Day is so exciting to me. It's just so exciting. Um, and I want to focus on the girl part, less the women part, because what it really does is it's leading them forward. It's really saying to young women, you can look up and you will see people like Jenny and people on this call, uh, people like Daniela, people like Kim, people like Lexi. And I think I saw Shana and um, I think Erica as well uh, on, on the call. I'm sorry. I, some people you know, clicked off too quickly and I wasn't sure if they were there. Uh, shout out to you, Raleigh. Uh, I think I saw you uh, there and Katie saw you as well. And Katie, thank, say hello to your parents for me. Um, I was on the soccer sidelines with Katie Caselli's parents many, many times. Um, and it was, it was a great experience. It was, I, at one point I heard, overheard somebody in one of the breakout rooms saying that I couldn't be, but both the men and the women were in, were playing the conference championship or it might've been for the, for the, I think it was probably the conference championship. And that I heard, I was with the men that time and I heard that the women had won and I burst into tears, bawling. You've all seen me cry. I'm just so proud of you. I just can't tell you. I'm coming to the end of my team here. You know, this is my moment. Um, I am, you know, Jenny, when you said the handoff in the relay about to hand off this extraordinary institution to someone else. And I've learned a lot about what a handoff looks like. Uh, and I'm trying very hard. I'm running as fast as I possibly can, but also making the handoff complete, precise, and perfect. So I'm doing the best I can um, to do that. 
So to be here with all of you is, is a special moment for me because this will be my last National Girls and Women in Sport Day. Um, when I started college, there was no Title IX. Uh, in fact, when I graduated from college, there was no Title IX because I graduated in 1972 and Title IX was passed after graduation. So in all of its very dimensions of gender equity, the extraordinary thing about Title IX is it really sought comprehensively to remove all the barriers to women. The barriers to women in sport, the barriers to women educationally, and the barriers to their full development as people, which can be created by violence against women. So discrimination and violence against women became something that was against the law of the land. And we've worked ever since then, all those years since Title IX, to pull those barriers out of the way so that they can, people can soar over those hurdles. I love your, your story, uh, Jenny. Um, Title IX is an example of getting rid of those barriers so that women can soar around the track. And uh, I hope all of you who've had that experience of being post Title IX, women and girls in sport will pay it forward. We'll find young women, be examples to them, encourage them, uh, and encourage them to do anything they want, including being a vice president of the United States, a college president, uh, a Supreme Court justice, and you know what? It's coming soon, a president of the United States too. So let's go forward on this uh, National Girls and Women's Sport Day um, with with appreciation for all those who have helped us and a real understanding that we have a team behind us and a team ahead of us leading us all forward. So thank you, Harley. So good to see you on this, uh, on this day, uh, but so good to see all the other folks here. Um, and I'm, I'm personally gonna claim credit for all those records that, that uh, Kim mentioned. It was my coaching, my strategies, my X's and O's, you know, I'm the one who did it all, um, uh, not at all. Uh, it was other people and it was just my great, great privilege. What a privilege to be here while that happened. So thank you all. All right, thank you, President Amat. We're gonna, um, this, is, this is my opportunity. I get to end the program with all my shout outs uh, as usual as we've in, in classic, NGWSD fashion, uh, now an annual tradition. So uh, we're going to circle back to you, President Amat, here in a second. But we'll we'll uh, we'll get started with um, with all the, the thank yous in order uh, for for this event um, um, today. So um, first and foremost, our speaker Jenny, thank you so much for joining us. Your your story, I like. I want to go run through a wall right now. Strong woman leader, just just really uh, inspiring, and I know that um, uh, that message resonates with with so many of our, our student athletes. And as we train them uh, to be leaders, um, and and as I go out in, into the world, and um, you know, taking those tidbits from uh, from from your talk, seeing the big picture, surrounding yourself with a positive and encouraging community, attention to details, progress over perfection, right? Consistency dreaming to do anything that, that you, you believe in, and you want to do and, and ultimately leading. So that's, uh, you know, lead just goes back to lead her forward. National girls, women's sports day has been, a, been the theme for, for the last several years and just really bring ties it all together. So thank you so much for, for being here and sharing all that info, uh, and, and your story with us. Um, so Kim got to give me a shout out, uh, before we got started, it's always this back and forth. Um, this, Day, this event, uh, the the progress that we've made and in, in, in growing this this wonderful program is is a true testament to Kim's hard work and her passion and love uh, for for all of you here on this on this call for for uh, uh, women in, in athletics and our women's teams and athletics in, in general uh, at at Knox and, and all of our students. So Kim, uh, thank you so much. And I know that uh, you know we went through and, and listed. Uh, the, the influential women at Knox uh, in, in our, our uh, you know, in our breakout rooms and, and Teresa, Kim, you, you both uh, end up on that list 
for me and I could, I could go on forever uh, for, for so many reasons. So Kim, thank you so much for everything uh, that you've done for me personally, for our, our women's teams and, and obviously for this event today. So thank you. Um, another shout crew. Crew Keller uh, this year has, has been, is his first NGWSD, but he has been absolutely instrumental in getting, uh, well, me, I can speak for myself, me organized um, and, and just getting things done and, and uh, from a logistical sense um, and just a huge supporter of, of all of you here and a, a great resource to us uh, here at Knox. So Crew, thank you so much for your help with all of it. Um, of course, our fearless leader, Daniela, uh, thank you for your continued support of this of this event and, and your enthusiasm uh, as we, you know, as we take this on and, and put this on and trying to connect our alumni and our current student athletes and, and celebrating uh, the wonderful women that we have here at Knox. So thank thank you for for your enthusiasm and your backing. We couldn't do it without you um, as well. And then uh, our, our uh, coaches and staff in the department obviously today is is celebrating our girls and our women but we have so many um uh men and and our men's teams uh and, and staff and coaches in our department that are champions for all of us every single day um and and we would be remiss if, if we didn't thank you and for your continued support uh, of of all of our student athletes um and especially especially our women we have a, a such a solid team uh, in our in our department and in our institution, um, that that really makes us just the strongest community I've ever been a part of. So thank you um, to all of you that are here today, and and even those that couldn't be uh, with us um, here. So uh, there's lots of other folks that have joined us from the from the co college. Beverly, I see you. Thank you so much your support uh, over the years of this event. It's it's so exciting to be able to bring uh, folks together. Uh, in, in this in this event. So if I'm, I'm missing people, I'm sorry. It's a, it, I can only see a few on my screen and we can go on uh, forever uh, with, with all of those thank yous. So uh, thank you to every, everyone truly uh, for being a part of this part of this day. Um, and President Ahmad, I told you we'd, we'd come back to you. Uh, and, and I, when asked, uh, I, I think I was, I tell that story all the time about running up to you and, and just being blamed for for you know making you cry in in the moment uh, on the soccer field it's my favorite Knox moment um and and celebrating two championships simultaneously um but this event and and everything that we have have been able to accomplish I mean that list of stat, stats James that must have taken you a long time thank you uh of putting those together it's it's remarkable and having seen the progress um not just for our women's teams, for for our entire program uh, over over this time is is a true testament to your leadership, um, and and so grateful for that um, over over the years certainly. So thank you so much. Um, we uh, put together a kudo board for you um, as this is your last National Girls and Women's Sports Day celebration as as our president. Um, and and we'll we'll cycle through this. You'll be able to to read all of the the kudos that have come out. Um, for you, but um, we are so forever grateful. Um, and I know, and you know, for myself as a as a woman that I've looked up to for a long time, and and for all the student athletes uh, on on the on the call today, um, thank you. And President Mott will share that full board with you so that you can catch up on all of those uh, notes to you. And the it continues to grow. People are still adding to it. So, um, and last, lastly, I just I always take this moment when we have our our women's teams uh, in the room to to remind you um, from from myself um, and Kim and Daniela and all of our athletic staff and and the alumni that are on the call. Uh, never forget, we are so proud of you uh, and, and all that you are able to, to do and accomplish on a daily basis. It's, it's remarkable um, and never shortchange yourself for, for what you're able, uh, able to do. Give yourself some, some credit and be proud of that and be proud of each other 
uh, through that through that process um, and continue just to, to all those tidbits that Jenny gave us today um, for yourself and, and for each other um, and, and never forget how proud we are of, of you. We've got to take every every opportunity we can uh, when we have you together um, to, to be sure that you know that. So um, I know that uh, we're going to keep steal Jenny uh, for a Q&A uh, after uh, we're all done here. But I think that that is gonna, gonna conclude our program and stick around. I will we'll do a Q&A with, with Jenny, um, I guess, starting right now. So thank you everyone. If you're jumping off, thanks for being here. So wonderful to see so many familiar faces and finally put faces with names of folks that I've received newsletters about. And Lexi, I've definitely seen your name on uh, newsletters that have come through. So to finally put a face with your name, it's been, this is such a wonderful day. And, you know, the pandemic has uh, 